Phil Martino joins us now from the 680 News Business Center. Phil, I've been looking forward to talking to you all day because I know you're watching the numbers, and I it was just out of the corner of my eye. I was watching the numbers, the roller coaster ride we went on, and that roller coaster is linked to, I guess, what used to be now the darling of smartphones. That's right, Apple. This all stems from Apple. It looks like Apple's iPhone is not selling in China. So this is where the problem started for uh, Wall Street today. Consumers are jittery about an economic slump and the trade war with the U.S. CEO Tim Cook says the demand for iPhones is waning and revenue for the last quarter of 2018 will fall well below projections. A decrease he traced mainly to China. The iPhone is Apple's biggest product, accounting for about 60% of its revenue in the July to September quarter. Apple is the latest company grab with increasing Chinese consumer anxiety. Other brand names such as Ford and Tiffany already have reported abrupt declines in sales to Chinese buyers. Apple shares fell 9% today. Wow. Now, and it's such an interesting business story, too, because it is a product that most people know so well. They're so, they use it every day, and it's something to watch for the next little while. That's right. And what happened with this today is it really did a number on Wall Street. It was an ugly, ugly trading day. Stocks tumbled with tech companies suffering their worst loss in seven years. The Dow closed down by 660 points to 22,686. On Bay Street, the infotech sector led the losses. The TSX closed off by 134 points taken a bite out of Apple. Well, there appears to be no end in sight, as I was just covering a little while ago, to the partial U.S. government shutdown, and it could soon have an impact on this side of the border. That's right. So this is there's a warning from Stats Canada. Stats Canada is warning that the partial shutdown could have an impact on the agency's ability to release a complete picture of trade between North America's largest trading partners. Each country has been using the other's import data to produce its export stats since 1990. U.S. imports from Canada reported to U.S. Customs and Border Protection are compiled by the U.S. Census Bureau and sent to Stats Canada to be used as stats for Canada's exports to the United States. Data for November won't be affected by the shutdown, which started back on December 22nd. However, future months could be affected because data for Canada's exports to the U.S. ended with the December numbers. And as the weather gets colder, certainly feeling it now, many of us are dreaming of a warm vacation down south. But, Phil, it turns out Canada is actually quite the winter destination for travelers. That's right. Okay, so I'm still the down south person, but apparently winter travel is finally becoming a trend for Canadians. A recent survey by Intercontinental Hotels Group found that over half of Canadians, 60%, consider Canada a go-to destination for winter travel. Robin S. Rock is a travel writer and best-selling author. Canada has an enormous bounty of winter experiences. Uh, in fact, I've just been skiing all morning with a bunch of Australians uh, who come all the way from Australia just to experience Canada. Um, so whether it's the ski resorts um, and all the snow activities, the festivals, uh, like say the uh, uh, Festival de Voyage in Winnipeg or in Quebec City, um, the fact that you can do things like uh, with all the encounter of bald eagles outside of Victoria, uh, the ice wine, you know, you can snowshoe amongst the vineyards, and, and taste ice wine. Um, there's incredible cultural stuff around Montreal. Now, this survey also found that millennials are most likely to embrace the cold at close to 35% of those surveyed. And Estrock says you can't do Canada if you can't do cold. And watching those images, you're reminded just how gorgeous it is here in Canada over the winter. It's a great place. As long as you dress for it. <laughs> That's right. Thanks Bundle for that, up. Phil. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Okay. Now Bye. it is over to Faisa Amin.